there was a boy. He needed to prove himself. He was determined to show his so-called friends that he was no wimp. How far would he go? Could he take a leap into the unknown? Now, I'm an adventurer, been all over the world and sailed all over the world. And I can understand the spirit of adventure and uh, youngsters wanting to go for a swim and jump off the harbour wall, it's exciting. But there are lots of exciting things to do which mightn't mean you lose your life. Harbour jumping is dangerous from the point of view of obstructions that could be in the water or not knowing what the water depth is, but here at Watch It, it's particularly dangerous because of the exiting and entering of vessels. And if a vessel comes in under full speed when we've got waves and wind out here, it's relatively calm inside and therefore one might be tempted to swim. But if you're in the water uh, with limited maneuvering room, there isn't any way that a vessel is going to be able to come to a complete stop. Somebody's going to get hurt. Somebody's going to get hurt. So my message is, Spirit of adventure, yes, but don't do things which endanger your life. I've been harbour jumping for 13 years. We've had uh, one accident since I've been since I've been doing it. So uh, just over on the pole, somebody jumping off, catching her feet on the railings and breaking her arm. I think most of the most of the kids down here they do it for the mainly for the adrenaline rush, mainly to look cool in front of their friends, maybe trying to impress the ladies. I think some of the main issues is from kids moving in from outside of the area plate from built up areas that there's no water around they're, they're coming down and they want to get involved with everyone so they're trying to prove themselves maybe jumping in doing something stupid and that's where a lot of the problems are because they, they haven't got the local knowledge and when you get them jumping outside with the tide going out that's when you get the real issues and that's when things can seriously go wrong I've been harbour jumping for seven years I think what a lot of us need to take into account now is that everyone's starting to uh, tombstone uh, this is extremely dangerous as you're at least 50 yards from dry land. A lot of people do outsiders, jumping on the outside of the harbour. Uh, that's extremely dangerous as you don't know what's in the water. There could be bits of driftwood. If you hit one of those, you're likely to break a bone or knock yourself out. You won't be able to swim round. And if the tide is against you as well, it's going to be almost impossible to get round. I love boating uh, working on this patch because no two days is ever the same. I find the, uh, the most difficult time to be that when we're returning after a long day out here in the uh, evening when we've got the setting sun, bright sunshine coming in on our glass, the glass could be covered in salt deposits that has been built up throughout the day, there is a risk that uh, one day we may just might not see that little head that is bobbing there in the water. This entrance here can be really the roughest half a mile of my day, both coming out and going in. We can encounter huge waves that have been generated, their energy has been generated from right out in the Atlantic that are delivered up the Bristol Channel and can come ashore across this harbour entrance. The problem exacerbated by the shallowness of the entrance and the rock formation that uh, we encounter just outside the harbour. Indeed, the safest and indeed the best method of approaching this entrance is at some speed to keep the vessel on track to avoid or to minimise the chance of the wave just sweeping us across the harbour entrance. Clearly, encountering swimmers, bathers, harbour jumpers in the uh, vicinity of the harbour entrance can catch us out at the very last minute and cause some problems. Some years ago, I and many others were involved in the search for a young lad that uh, went in off the harbour wall on the outside of the West Quay and uh, we searched, many of us, 
sadly to no avail and unfortunately that young man's body was recovered by the helicopter when the tide went out he was within about 15 feet of, uh, of where he went in despite being out on the water very very quickly and a very extensive search completed for this young man uh, he was uh, recovered from the water dead some time later Tombstoming or harbour jumping involves jumping from a height into water. It is a high risk activity which is unregulated and unsupervised and often can lead to lethal or tragic consequences. Since 2005 there have been over 10 recorded deaths and at least 38 serious injuries caused as a result of this activity. The Bristol Channel is the second fastest tidal estuary in the world bringing in up to 14 metres of tide during the year. This means that many items are washed ashore and depending on where they are deposited on the seabed may result in an obstruction that somebody could jump on and seriously injure themselves. In addition, many people bring down items and throw them into the harbour, such as bicycles, where if you were to land on one in the shallow water, you would seriously injure yourself. Think before you jump. Don't let alcohol, drugs or peer pressure alter your judgement. You must also consider that somebody younger than you may be watching and may copy your actions, who, unlike you, may not be aware of the dangers or what could happen. Have any of you seen any incidents, dangerous incidents in Watchip regarding harbour jumping? Yeah, my brother jumped off outsiders which is basically jumping on the outside of the harbour and um, he couldn't swim back round because the tide was dragging him out and we went to grab a ring to save him but um, the ring was gone from the box so my brother had to run all the way down the other side of the harbour to fetch a ring and then we reeled him in with that ring. This girl a couple of years ago was on white pole and it was windy and it was really wet she jumped off and clipped the railings and broke her arm and got unconscious. So, like, literally everyone jumped in. Boat stopped for us just so we can go and get her. And then all the paramedics came out and then she was fine after that. Broke her arm, but she's never done it after that. Uh, if somebody got into trouble whilst tombstoning or harbour jumping, uh, we might receive calls from the Coast Guard or members of the public. And if we did, we would automatically send two fire engines from Willerton with two crews of six people. If somebody's doing something they shouldn't hear by harbour jumping or tombstoning and tying up all of our fire resources within the area as well as other resources, should somebody have a fire or a car accident within the vicinity of Watchett or Williton, the next nearest fire appliance would be probably around 30 minutes away. Watchett on the Bristol Channel coast has the second highest rise and fall of tide in the world. On average, there's 40 tonnes of mud come in on each tide. Two tides a day brings a substantial amount of mud into the harbour and it's our concern that somebody is going to jump in when there's very little water in the harbour and end up stuck in the mud. Because the spring tide's very fast flowing someone could easily get stuck in the mud and possibly drown before we could actually get to them to get them out. What a lot of you don't appreciate, when people used to harbour jump years ago it was a commercial port, so we only had odd ships coming in. Yeah. Now the marina's there, you've got a lot more craft going in and out. So anything coming in can't see you on the, on the point where the light is. Boat owners uh, have an awful lot to think about when they're driving. The, the boats aren't particularly manoeuvrable things. They're coming in, they've got lots of other things on their mind. It's not as though there's big signs up outside saying, warning, harbour jumping. Injuries tend to be quite horrific if a boat runs over someone. Um, in a lot of cases, they're actually fatal as well. I'm sure in a lot of cases that the boat owner can do nothing about it. They've suddenly run over someone. Who knows what sort of injuries have been, uh, have been caused? Uh, that's going to stay with them for the rest of their life. Yeah.